When brewing Japanese green tea, it's important to make sure you have the right tools. A Kyusu teapot is the best way to brew most Japanese green teas. It's easy to identify because of its iconic side handle, which serves two purposes. First, it's hollow so it cools off quickly, allowing you to pour the tea without burning your hand. Also, it allows you to pour with more refined movements. All it takes is a simple turn of the wrist to pour a beautiful cup of Japanese green tea. In this video, we're gonna take a short trip around Japan to see a few different types of teapots and how they're used. We'll also pick up a few tips along the way to help us brew the perfect cup of Japanese green tea. First, let's head off to Kirishima to watch how one of the farmers we work with, Mr. Henta, prepares tea for his guests. First, he'll add in some sencha to his Kyusu teapot. Five grams is typically the perfect amount of tea when it comes to sencha. To measure out the water, he'll pour it into four separate cups, one for each guest. He uses a special water cooler called a yuzumashi to cool the water off. You really shouldn't use boiling water to brew Japanese green tea. Instead, you can either set the temperature with a water heater or you can do it the old fashioned way. Just start off with boiling water and pour it into a series of cups. Each cup will cool the water down by 18 degrees Fahrenheit and after three or four consecutive cups, it will be in the range of 150 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit, which is perfect for sencha. You can also use the specialized yuzumashi water cooler like Mr. Henta here. Mr. Henta will then pour the water from the cups into the teapot and let the tea brew for one minute. When pouring tea for four people like this, you will want to use the alternate pouring method. Because the tea leaves settle to the bottom of the teapot, the water poured out last will be the strongest in flavor. To make sure that each guest gets the same amount of flavor, you will need to alternate the pouring. First cup one, then cup two, three, four, and repeating like this until all the tea has been poured out. It is very important for each guest to have the same flavor of tea so you can discuss it and truly appreciate the tea together. You may notice people shaking out the last few drops of the tea from the teapot. This is actually important because the last few drops of tea are usually the strongest because they've been in contact with the leaves for the longest time. You also don't want to let the water sit in the kyusu and overbrew, otherwise your next pouring will be bitter. The kyusu isn't the only type of teapot used in Japan. Another popular type of teapot is called a hohin. This is typically reserved for premium Japanese green teas like Yokoro and Kabusecha. These teas are prepared with a lower temperature and a higher leaf to water ratio. For Sencha, you can use 5 grams of tea leaves and 150 milliliters of water, but for Gyokuro, you may want to use 5 grams of leaves and 70 to 100 milliliters of water. At the small tea shop in Kyoto, a tea master prepares a course of three different teas, a Sencha, a Hojicha, and a Gyokuro. She uses very little water to prepare these teas, particularly the gyokoro. This concentrates the teas into a smaller space, creating a richer tasting experience. To pour, she uses the three finger method. The points of contact are three fingers on each side of the teapot and one on the top lid. This makes sure her hands are only touching the cooler parts of the teapot. Next, let's travel to Okinawa in the far south of Japan. In the small Yomitan village of Okinawa, here a number of different families sell their handmade pottery with all sorts of beautiful designs. This is a carefully honed skill that takes years and even generations to master. So we are here in a small pottery store and actually um, what you can see here are um, also uh, handmade uh, teapots. And this actually is, is a different teapot where you can see that actually the brewing is different. So from the Kyushu, what we saw, before, uh, what we saw for example, that you have uh, here with this one, you have, um, you have a net inside, so it doesn't uh, pass through the tea. You can see it in here. And uh, another brewing style is actually um, this one here, so you have uh, this one also in Europe, we know, we are sometimes use for tea. So what they do is they put the tea in here, and as you can see it is uh, much higher, so the water has to come up much higher, so you have to fill in more water. They fill in more water here until the, the tea is covered, they leave it for one minute, and then actually um, uh, you pour the water into the teacup, you let it in the teacup, so it's a, it's a little bit of hotter water, up, sometimes even up to eight, uh, 90 degrees. And then you pour it back in, and then the tea, which it has been brewed for one minute, then you put the water here, mixes again in the second steeping, and then actually you have like two steeping in the pot, and then you finally pour it into the teapot and you drink it. So it's a different style of uh, making tea. Uh, besides the Kyushu or normal style. 
Finally, let's head off to Tokyo to see a modern take on the Kyushu teapot. This clear teapot is perfectly suited to the lifestyle of the modern Japanese tea lover. It's made out of heat resistant resin that doesn't break unlike its clay counterpart. It's also dishwasher safe so it's easy to clean. In addition to this, the teapots can also be stacked on top of one another to save space. This is a great alternative to use if you are on the go. The downside of this clear teapot is that it doesn't allow the leaves much space to open up. The leaves are cramped inside the strainer, whereas with the teapot they have plenty of room to open up and fully release their flavor into the water. The teapot then has a built-in strainer to catch them as you pour, so none of the leaves end up in your cup. Another benefit to a clay kyusu teapot is that the clay itself can actually accentuate the flavor. Some Japanese green teas are well loved for their sweet and savory flavors. We have found that unglazed clay teapots actually push these savory flavors even further, giving you a richer tasting experience. The clay can also interact with the catechins of the tea and make it slightly less bitter. For beginners, we recommend using a glazed clay teapot. Because there is a thin layer of glaze between the tea and the clay, there is less of an impact on the flavor. This means that you can make a wide array of different teas using the same teapot. If you would like to get your tea journey started off right with all the right tools, you can pick up a red Kyusu teapot from our website. For a limited time, you can get a free red teapot when you sign up for our monthly tea club. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.